words that we could be legends etched in the stone forever on thrones histories made in the moments heroes collide it's all and welcome to another episode of was solo we came to fight So, grab yourself one of these. Here's one I prepared earlier. Plenty of them lying around. And poke it with a stick. Follow it up. Then, end up at Mount Observation. about you but uh, being able to come up to places like this have a nice warm lunch out of the back of the car without having to stop and grab some takeaway Well, g'day guys and welcome to another episode of Was Solo. Uh, here I am out in the eastern hills of Perth. Now for those of you that are new to the channel, uh, Was Solo is a series of videos I'm putting together for those people that are new to four-wheel driving, just to show you some tracks and trails that you can quite easily get out and do on your own safely without any hassles and without the need for somebody else to come along if you just want to take the family out for a drive. So. Where am I? Today I'm going to show you the Jeepcraft Trail. Now the Jeepcraft Trail is located up in the hills past the power lines. That there is the traditional end of the power lines truck. It does continue up that way and we will meet up with it eventually on the other side of this trail. Now the Jeepcraft Trail was mapped out by the uh, owner of Jeepcraft, which is now known as Craft Motorsports, a uh, partner of our channel. And uh, Tony mapped this trail out many, many years ago for a charity drive. And uh, since then, I think it's kind of one of those tracks that's got lost. Now, you can find some coordinates on the Four Wheel Drive Association website, I believe. Um, and you can definitely find some coordinates on um, Four Wheeling Australia's website. However, I will show you exactly where it is. Now, the road I am on now is called Talbot West Road. It runs off, I think it's called the Southern Highway, uh, which is the turn off at the lakes on the Great Eastern Highway on the way to Northam. So if you turn right at the BP, follow it through until you get to Talbot West Road. This is where I am now. And the start of the track is up the, not the end, but a few kilometers down this track here. But uh, I'm gonna let some air out of the tires now, and uh, then we're gonna hit the track. Now, of course, as usual, going off road, always let your tires down to, as I've said before, protect your tires, protect your track, and stop you from getting stuck. Because when you're on your own, the last thing you want to do is get stuck. But always make sure you've got your recovery gear with you. So here we go. I'll just knock them down to about 20 PSI, I think. That should do. Now, this is not an overly difficult track. Um, however, we have had a hell of a lot of rain here in Perth. In the last two weeks, we've had over 100 millimeters of rain. And today is the first time it's stopped raining all week. So there's going to be a bit of water on the truck, which I must admit scares me a little bit. <laughs> but you know, you gotta have a bit of an adventure. So uh, I, luckily I know the track, so I know where the bog holes are and I know what to go around and what not to go around. But I'll show you exactly what I mean. And uh, hopefully there is a bit of water around so we can have a bit of fun.
Alrighty, so as I said before, I've just gone straight down to 20 psi all the way around and already these corrugations are quite comfortable to drive on. This road is traditionally corrugated, um, but as soon as you drop your tyre pressures down, that just makes it so much easier. Now there is a little bit of bitumen on this road. I'm coming up to a T intersection now and a kangaroo just crossing the road, so I'll let him go through. Uh, and as always, the outside camera is not on when a kangaroo goes across the road. So uh, here we are with a little bit of bitumen just to cross over, which is no big deal. There's about 500 metres of bitumen further down this road and then it goes back to dirt. So uh, there's no issues with your tyres. As long as you take it easy and don't go screaming down here at 100 kilometres an hour, you will not damage your tyres at all and you will be perfectly fine i just wind the window up because a it's 11 degrees outside and b it's a little bit noisy and windy so uh, it hasn't been overly warm at all so far we are in the middle of winter in perth but uh, traditionally we get you know 18 20 degree days but um so far this winter we've uh, had the pleasure of you know five to ten degree mornings and 15 degree days so uh, it's a bit unusual for us here in western australia but uh, Never mind, just makes us look forward to, well, it makes me look more forward to summer anyway. So, uh, should be just about at the end of the bitumen now, and then we will come across the beginning of the Jeepcraft Trail. Um, <clears throat> now, as I said, this was mapped out many, many years ago, and even Tony doesn't even remember it. Um, but traditionally, it starts at Owen Road, I think the name of the road is. I will verify that on my GPS in a minute when we get there and uh, that's where the trail begins. It's a relatively easy track. Uh, there are some areas there that you can have a bit of play, a bit of a fun on. It follows a fence line to start with, goes into the forest, and then it uh, tees off at a creek bed where you turn left and you follow the creek bed all the way back up to the southern highway back up there where the track traditionally ends. But I'm going to take a little bit of a twist. I'm going to turn right and take you up to a beautiful picnic spot up the hills called Mount Observation. So uh, we'll get to uh, the start of the track up here and I'll, uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are at the side of the track. Now, my bad, I thought the road actually uh, turned back in dirt, but as you can see, it's still bitumen there and there, but this is where we turn off. This is called Owen Road. So that is, it's even signposted, so it is the gazetted road, so there you go. Owen Road, Shire of York boundary. So there is the boundary of the Shire of York to give you a bit of a reference as to what the track looks like. Now, doesn't matter if you take that or that, they end up in the same place, but that is Owen Road. It runs across, or sorry, it runs along the fence line there until it gets up into the hills where we'll start having a bit of fun and uh, let's hope we come across a bit of water. All right.
Okay, so as predicted, there is a little bit of water on the truck, however, nothing to be too worried about as yet. Now, that there is basically just a puddle across the road, but you do have to be careful along tracks like this that you do not know, because a puddle across the road can look like a puddle across the road, but there might be a hidden bog hole underneath that water that you just cannot see. And I've seen vehicles basically end their life vehicle I'm talking about on uh, puddles up in the hills where they've half gone round a puddle ended up with two wheels and a bog hole and the vehicle has filled up with um, water and written it off so you do have to be very careful if in doubt get out walk it have a look poke it with a stick of which I'll show you now there are some sections along here where I think the bulldozer driver that came through here originally had a bit of fun and he's put these big whoop de doos in which you can see me going over the top of now um, as drain runoffs to the side and there's a big puddle there and uh, just adds for a little bit more excitement all right we shall uh, continue on down this trail and uh, see how much more water's laying around Dressed in the skin of your luminescent light We are our ship searching for love ashore Hearts are now anchored, we're searching no more Waving our way through the darkest of night Dressed in the skin of your luminescent light We are our ship searching for love ashore Alright, well this wasn't here last time I did this trip. There is a bloody great big tree across the track. So, uh, unfortunately, there's only one thing you can do in this case, and some people have already started a bypass track around here. Now, this smells very like fresh burn to me. I can still smell uh, some burn here. So this has uh, been the result of a uh, burn off by the looks of it. And we'll just check out. My guess is that's been burnt. And with the amount of rain we've had over the past few weeks, it has uprooted itself and come down on the track. But, uh, well, maybe it was a while ago because uh, this trail around here, it doesn't look that old, but it probably looks a bit older than a couple of weeks. But, uh, that is one hell of a tree. You go up from this end and it's quite firm going around here so there's no issues there and it comes out just up there but you wouldn't want to be driving a Y62 would you Lachlan? <laughs> I'm not sure you'd fit through there but uh, never mind we'll see how we go but uh, yeah that is a big tree. Okay let's get around this. All right, so as I said, this is quite firm. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. And there are tracks going around here already. So it's not like I'm cutting a new track. Eventually I'm guessing, because this is probably a bit of a fire trail. Now that is a very skinny gap through there. I'm not even sure I'll fit through there, but we'll give it a go. If you suddenly end up pointing in a different direction, it's because my mirrors hit the tree. Boom, there it goes. I'll just straighten that back out again. That is very tight. Very, very tight. There is another one there that's a bit wider and another one over there, but I just thought I'd take the skinny one. <laughs> All right, we are round that obstacle, and uh, let's see what's in store for us next. I put in my card, I know what it costs. Yeah, I put in the work that you don't. Day after day, I work and I play. Yeah, I'll do all the things that you won't. Even when my feet get tired, I will keep on moving higher. I'm the story you don't speak of. I'm the one they call the underdog. Cause every time. 
the bush comes too sharp I'm climbing over you to reach the top Cause I want everything or nothing at all Yeah, I want everything or nothing at all Cause I want everything or nothing, nothing, nothing Nothing at all To care what you think, or what you believe Cause I'm gonna turn the world Now that section there, I didn't have to go through there, um, as you can see where the camera is there, uh, there's actually a, the track goes around here but I just thought I'd do that for a bit of fun. So uh, this is the section where the creek, I better go and turn that camera off actually. This is actually the section where the creek comes into play. So this is the end of Owen Road down there. And then you basically turn left into, let's see if I can pronounce this right. One, one da bin ring road. There you go. One da bin ring road. And I know that because there's a sign that says one da bin ring road. So there you go. And there is Owen Road. So if you're looking for some markers, some direction, that is Owen Road. Up there, this is where it ends, and this is one to Bin Ring Road. There you go. I don't know where that goes, it goes up there, but this direction it follows the creek bed and uh, takes you back up to the southern highway. So uh, I'll take you down to the creek bed and we'll have a look down there. Okay, so this is the creek now. Traditionally, in summer, this is dry, and if you want more of a challenge, you can actually drive in the creek bed itself, but I wouldn't recommend it at this time of year. It's not that deep. Uh, I can see the bottom. Only looks about at its worst point, about a foot deep, just in there. So you could quite easily cross that. It looks quite firm here. Just stepping on here, yeah, that is as hard as anything. So if you wanted to, you could cross that, go back around the other side, and there looks like another entrance through the creek there. So if you wanted to, but people do drive this creek. You can see wheel ruts in it. If you want more of a challenge, and it does get more and more challenging the more you go along. But there's a reference for you. In the summer, of course, this will be dry, but in the winter, it's obviously holding water. So here's, a, here's the reference for you. If you get to the creek, you've gone too far. So we'll, we'll get back on Wonder Bing Ring Road and uh, head back that way. Just up in the rain Yeah, I'ma shake your bones like thunder Even when my feet get tired I will keep on moving high I want everything and nothing at all Yeah, I want everything and nothing at all Cause I want everything and nothing, nothing, nothing Nothing at all I don't want nothing at all Unless I can have it all I don't want nothing I don't want nothing in dark Unless I can have it all Okay, now as suspected, there is some water on the track and I do know that some of these holes are rather deep because I've had to pull a few people out of them. So, the best way to check if you're not sure, and don't assume it's just a puddle because that could be four foot deep for all you know and uh, it will end your day very badly if you go in there um, and you're not prepared for it. So, grab yourself one of these, here's one I prepared earlier, plenty of them lying around and poke it with a stick. And then you'll know exactly 
how deep it is and whether you can trust it or not. That's quite firm there. That's firm, but about a foot deep. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. And the exit is quite firm as well. And check the other side because you never know. Quite firm, quite firm. A little bit deeper there. So that's about four, 450 mil deep at its worst point, or oh, a little bit deeper there. All right, so probably okay to go through, but always, if you're unsure, there's a perfectly good bypass track here, which is not deep at all. That one is fine. Now, I'm probably not even in camera here, so uh, there is another one just a little bit further up the track, but we'll go through this one and uh, then we'll check out this one up here. So I'll just throw me stick there so that I can need it. Now I'm quite confident that I can go through that. Um, I don't have a snorkel, so again, I do need to be very careful where I'm sticking my car in but uh, I can feel that that is quite a firm base. There's nothing that's gonna surprise me in there, so I'm quite confident to go through. But again, if you're not sure, perfectly good bypass truck over there. And holes like this, never hit them at a million miles an hour. Always drop in and drive out because you can do all sorts of damage. It might just be water, but water with a bit of pressure behind it can cause all sorts of damage. easily. Now this is the one that can catch you out. All right now this one here is the one that could catch you out if my memory serves me correctly. Now, if I stick the stick in this this should be quite deep. It's not too bad there but yeah there have a look how far that stick goes down and I'll get around the other side because it will be easier. Now, I would not recommend going through a hole like this when you're out on your own, because if you get stuck, it's quite firm on that side, but on this side, it is as soft as anything. And that's how deep it is. It's a couple of feet deep, and it keeps going down into the hole there. Now, I've actually pulled a couple of vehicles out of this hole when I brought a trip through here. Um, one person actually decided, because you can go around it here, which is where I'm going to go. Um, and he actually decided to do half and half. He went half around it and half in it and ended up down in this hole and I had to pull him out. And then the next person came through and got stuck right in the middle of the hole and I had to pull them out as well. So uh, we don't need that stick anymore because I'm not going through there. But uh, yeah, you got to think, if you've got a winch and you've got all the recovery gear, it's not going to help you if you can't get out of the car to actually get yourself out and into a position where you can winch because uh, if you pass your door seals in, in water, you can't open your doors so you can't get out. So uh, I'm going to go around this and uh, carry on up the track. So here's a little section here that I've been itching to show you. It's a little play area, there's a rock that you can climb off, but you have to cross over the creek to get to. So you just turn off the track here, you can't miss it. It's the only rock along the side of the track. You can drive up here. Now there is a creek crossing to go across, and I have done this creek crossing before, but only in the dry. So once again, I'm gonna get out, have a look at it, and see if I can safely cross it on my own. Alrighty, so here it is. Now, as you can see, it's holding a bit of water. Now, I'm just going to check how deep it is. I can see the bottom on this side. Now, I can
can see the bottom. And because I know what it's like, I'm quite confident to cross that because we need to get just up there. Um, however, it is a little bit deeper than normal. Well, should I say normal? I've never seen water in it, but uh, this creek is holding quite a bit of water because we have had a lot of rain. But uh, I'm quite confident I can get through that even without a snorkel. So uh, I'm just going to quickly poke it with a stick just to make sure. I'm not even sure I can get across the other side to put a camera out. So we'll see how we go. Ah, that's pretty firm. We should be right. Alrighty, so safely across that river. Now I used low range just for shits and giggles, just to make sure I got through there. Now, for those of you that are interested, I've been in high range all the way so far, apart from that little creek crossing, because the last thing you want to do is get stuck in a bit of water, even though it was quite firm and uh, not that deep. But uh, again, when you're on your own, uh, on the side of caution, and if you've got it, you might as well use it. So uh, anyhow, this is, the rock. So you can come up this side or we'll walk up here. You can actually see some tracks where people drive it. Well, that just might be where the water's been running down. <laughs> I think it's where the water's been running down. So you can come up here. Now, the problem when you're coming up these things is unless you've got a spotter, all you can see is that. So it'll be a little bit more difficult. And then you just follow the edge here back down and around, slightly more difficult off the end there and slightly easier straight down there. So we'll give it a go and uh, this is why I crossed the river. So All right, now I've put the outside camera on here as well just so you can get the angle of what I will see going up this rock. Again, I'm in low range and I'm in rock mode for those that are interested because this is a rock. So why not use rock mode? And now all I can see is the trees and the sky. Normally Brad or Gary would be standing there showing me which way to go. And uh, that is up. And now I'll just move the camera and we'll show you down. Okay, so I'm gonna take the slightly more difficult line here. Just make sure I'm on the right track which is basically sticking to the right hand edge of the rock without slipping off the right hand edge of the rock and go over this bit of a lip now I'm just in first gear low range easily back down and that is the hardest line of them all to come down so uh, now there's another way to get across the creek up here and I'm not sure whether there's a lot of water involved in it but we're going to have a look alrighty so this is it here uh, it's not far it's about 100 meters from the rock just to the right so when you come out from the rock heading back towards the creek crossing you can go to the right and that is it there it's no big deal. It's pretty firm base. I can see rocks flowing a little bit from the top of the creek and the deepest part is just there. So that is no issue at all. And this track actually continues on through there and I wouldn't be going to go through there. Not certainly on my own, that is for sure. So we will cross right here. Thank you very much.
so that little section there is a it's a good fun little place to stop have your morning tea or your lunch depending on what time of day you're out here um, and a good place to have a little bit of fun on the rock and across the creek and uh, oh there's some more water on the track here which we might have to get out and poke a stick at alrighty I have poked all the holes and apart from the fact that they're all very wet they are not that deep and as wrong as that sounds I'm gonna leave it in the video let's go alrighty now traditionally the track ends just up here I can show you on the GPS that there is the Great Southern Highway and this here and this road here is actually the power lines track well it's the end of the power lines track and there's a uh, there's a bit of traffic coming through here they're coming down the track so that tells me the tracks open and it could be the Land Rover Club so this is the power lines track I have come across the Land Rover Club of WA who are out here having a bit of a trip now as I was saying now I think that's called Nanguring Road. That is the power lines track. So if you follow this track all the way through here, you will end up at the end of the power lines. But if you follow it up there, you end up at Mount Observation, which is my destination. Now traditionally the Jeep Craft Trail ends about a kilometre that way, and it's pretty much just a dirt track from here. There are some horrible bog holes here which I would suggest you stay well out of. That one there has actually been blocked off because it's very nasty. So, uh, but uh, yeah, basically where it says Nanguring Road, turn right and there's an interesting little track that takes you up to Mount Observation, which we will take now. Alrighty, now we just have to cross that creek one more time as we make our, make our way up this section of the track. And it's, it's not too deep and it's pretty firm. So. So there's some more water across the track here and I have poked it with the stick. Okay, so we're not too far from our destination, which is Mount Observation. And from memory, pretty much the track is relatively easy from here on in um, and they are doing a bit of work through here uh, they're dropping some cables in the ground it looks like optic fiber cables for some reason so they have cleared all the left hand side of the track but they've left the track alone which is good because uh, usually they tend to stuff things up when they do that now I have reached a T intersection and I can't actually remember if I turn left or right here I think it's a zigzag let's go left Right. 
obvious lingering road, so we keep following this up. Bit of a dog leg left and right, keeps us going up towards Mount Observation. Uh, left hand side of the track is fairly washed away, but still a distinct track on the right hand side. Nothing to worry about at all. So we're nearly there. And here we are, Mount Observation Picnic Area. I can finally shut the motor up. So there you go, and I've got the place to myself by the looks of it. What a cracking spot. You've got uh, picnic tables, barbecue plates and fire rings. Uh, there's a drop toilet over there, and there's a magnificent view just over there. So. Uh, this is it, Mount Observation, our final destination on this trail. So uh, as I said, we took a little bit of a detour. We uh, took up the old power lines road and uh, just to come up here, or we could have ended it down there. But hey, a little bit extra to come up to a spot like this for lunch is really good. Now I've got a little bit of time before my lunch is ready. Uh, so I might just throw the drone up and we'll have a look around, eh? Now, I don't know about you, but uh, being able to come up to places like this, have a nice warm lunch out of the back of the car without having to stop and grab some takeaway, it's awesome. So, I'm just going the traditional chicken strips today. Nothing fancy, with a bit of mayo and a can of Coke. What more could you want? All straight out of the fridge and the freezer, except I always do this. Forget to get a knife out. So, uh, just to give you an idea of what's coming up on the channel, um, the boys and I are heading out in a couple of weeks. Now, if you've been wondering where everybody is, <laughs> we haven't split up and they haven't abandoned me. Brad's had some issues with his suspension over the last couple of months and basically hasn't been game to take his vehicle off-road through fear of sending one of his shock absorbers straight through his fuse box. So he's been kind of locked away at home, waiting for all the parts to come in. Our friends over at Malaga Suspension I hear have come through with the new springs for the rear of the WH and uh, all the other bits and pieces that he required have come in from various places and uh, he will be fitting those very soon. Now the boys and I will be heading up to or heading out to the wheat belt in the next couple of weeks. We're going to take a few days off work and uh, head out into the wheat belt and do some touring and filming out there. Now it won't be full on four wheel driving because I don't actually know if uh, Brad's parts will be installed by then, but uh, just for driving off-road on dirt roads and stuff like that, he should be perfectly fine. But uh, it's the it's the bit of rough and tumble and flexing, not that we flex much in the Jeeps, but uh, you know what I mean. And uh, that's what he's been really worried about 
with his vehicle and I'm sorry if I've got my back to the camera but it's very hard to fit that camera in here so uh, that's where we are heading um, and of course I'll be doing a few more of these was solo episodes for you for you guys and your beginners now as I said at the beginning of the video uh, these videos are specifically aimed at our beginners group however they are for everybody to enjoy so if you've got any um, tracks or trails you want me to try and show you or you want me to try and show you that sounds a bit better um, let me know and uh, I'll be happy to go and have a look at them now I have had a few people ask me about the Moore River track I will do the Moore River track however at this time of year the river will be and I don't want to cross that in this so I need to wait until the river drops down a little bit because that's the whole point of going down that Moore River track is to drive across the river onto the other side uh, and you know it's also an awesome place to have a barbecue lunch you're technically not supposed to camp there and you don't drive in the river but you can drive at the designated crossings so that is the whole point and there's no point in going down that track if I can't actually get across the river so I'm going to enjoy my lunch before it gets cold and uh, I'll see you when I'm done Alright guys, well there you go, that is the Jeep Craft Trail with my little twist done and dusted. Now quite a pleasant morning's drive, the rain has stayed away and the sun's even come out. It was a cracking 13 degrees earlier so I took my uh, hoodie off because uh, running backwards and forwards to get the camera all day long does tend to warm you up a little bit and uh, yep, you cannot see anybody else with me because I am doing this on my own as cars drive past on the Southern Highway. Completely filmed by me, edited by me, driven by me, no one else around. So just goes to show there are plenty of trails and tracks close to Perth that you can actually do on your own without any issues whatsoever. So uh, I just like to take this opportunity to thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series. Don't forget to let me know in the comments below if there's any tracks you want me to show you and I'll be more than happy to go out and give them a go and film them for you. I hope my directions have uh, giving you an idea on where this track is uh, and if they're not feel free to shoot me a message and I'd be happy to give you some directions but it's pretty easy starts at Arwen Road turn right at basically the extension of the power lines and come up the hill to Mount Observation have a beautiful lunch in the picnic area or an afternoon tea or a morning tea depending on what time of day pretty much half a day I left home again around 7 30 this morning and it's just past lunchtime and I've got about an hour's drive home so uh, Okay, enough of me rabbiting on. 
Thank you very much for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and help support the channel. And I'll see you on our next adventure. Cheers guys.